but I didn't really think about what it would be like to be a parent with an infant with life threatening allergies. It never came across my brain that she could have one. Um, it took months for us to figure it out. The first time we gave her formula, she was vomiting and she was just lethargic and it was so frightening. And I asked the pediatrician, you know, we've had some problems feeding Scarlett, so we've given her some formula on some occasions, but she throws up. And multiple pediatricians we talked to kind of played off the, the symptoms as that's what babies do. But I knew that like in my heart, something was different. It's not just that babies vomit. It was the way she vomited. It was the, the, the fussiness she exhibited. So a couple months go by and said, you know, I'm noticing that there's eczema. Um, you know, she had those weird episodes when she was really little with formula. And her sister has a tree nut allergy. You know, could there be something here? I was the one, as the I, very fortunate educated parent, to say, well, we're going to go to an allergist. We're going to go get her tested because, you know, something's not right. I, I don't know what's not right, but something's not right. And the, the pediatrician was supportive, of course. She said, yeah, take her to an allergist. Two days later, we gave her soy formula, and she just starts projectile vomiting everywhere. All over me, all over her nursery. And I just remember standing there frozen because I was like, it's happening again. So we called the pediatrician, and this is like 9 o'clock at night. The pediatrician asked me, you know, is, is she hoarse? And, and I go, I, I, I don't know how to tell if an infant is hoarse. What does that mean? And she said, put the phone on speaker. And Scarlett started going, as soon as the pediatrician heard that sound, she goes, that is hoarseness, that's mucus. And the pediatrician said, look at her tongue. Her tongue had started to swell. And at that point, we realized, oh my god, this is full-blown anaphylaxis. We know we need to give her OBQ. And the pediatrician said, absolutely. And she said, call 911. We pulled out OBQ. We opened up the device. He held her, and I grabbed her leg, and I did the injection. As soon as we injected her with OBQ.1, you could actually see epinephrine working. It was like somebody turned off a faucet. All of the symptoms stopped. The needle was in and out of her leg so fast. Pulling the device, pulling the safety guard, and the actual injection, it was so easy. It made it that we could do it. We weren't scared to actually do the injection. And we're just very fortunate that on the night that Scarlett went into anaphylaxis, we were prepared. We had OBQ.1. I believe it truly saved my daughter's life. It saved my baby's life. Indication. OBQ epinephrine injection USP is a prescription medicine used to treat life-threatening allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis, in people who are at risk for or have a history of serious allergic reactions. Important safety information. OVQ is for immediate self or caregiver administration and does not take the place of emergency medical care. Seek immediate medical treatment after using OVQ. Each OVQ contains a single dose of epinephrine. OVQ should only be injected into your outer thigh, through clothing if necessary. If you inject a young child or infant with OVQ, hold their leg firmly in place before and during the injection to prevent injuries. Do not inject OVQ into any other part of your body, such as into veins, buttocks, fingers, toes, hands, or feet. If this occurs, seek immediate medical treatment and make sure to inform the healthcare provider of the location of the accidental injection. Only a healthcare provider should give additional doses of epinephrine if more than two doses are necessary for a single allergic emergency. Rarely, patients who use OVQ may develop infections at the injection site within a few days of an injection. Some of these infections can be serious. Call your healthcare provider right away if you have any of the following symptoms at an injection site. Redness that does not go away, swelling, tenderness, or the area feels warm to the touch. If you have certain medical conditions or take certain medicines, your condition may get worse or you may have more or longer lasting side effects when you use OVQ. Be sure to tell your healthcare provider about all the medicines you take especially medicines for asthma. Also tell your healthcare provider about all of your medical conditions, especially if you have asthma, a history of depression, thyroid problems, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, heart problems, or high blood pressure, have any other medical conditions, are pregnant or plan to become pregnant, or are breastfeeding or plan to breastfeed. Epinephrine should be used with caution if you have heart disease or are taking certain medicines that can cause heart-related cardiac symptoms. 
Common side effects include fast, irregular, or pounding heartbeat, sweating, shakiness, headache, paleness, feelings of overexcitement, nervousness, or anxiety, weakness, dizziness, nausea, and vomiting, or breathing problems. These side effects usually go away quickly, especially if you rest. Tell your healthcare provider if you have any side effect that bothers you or that does not go away. Please see the full prescribing information and patient information available at www.auvi-q.com. You are encouraged to report negative side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov forward slash medwatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088.